About 12,000 years ago humanity invented farming in the Fertile Crescent, an arc of highly fertile land from the Nile to Tigris. Agriculture was most likely one of the first steps toward civilization, and with the advancement of agriculture, humanity began to experiment with different types of crops. They eventually noticed that certain crops brought certain experiences and feelings each time they took them. And as such these drugs became a central part of many cultures throughout the millennia. Welcome to Crazy History, where we bring you the craziest weirdest facts from human history. Join us today as we look at how drugs were like in ancient times. Deadly Nightshade Though the ancient Greeks are regarded as one of the more cultured civilizations of ancient times, some of their drugs were totally identical to savagery and one of the more notorious drugs of the bunch was called Deadly Nightshade. Deadly Nightshade was so trippy that it was often associated with pseudo-arts of magic and potion making. Some credit for relating Deadly Nightshade with mystical powers goes to poet Ovid who associated the herb with witches and warlocks in his poems. The reason this drug was not easily accessible was that even a slight excessive dosage could cause death. But if consumed in precise amounts, Deadly Nightshade was potent enough to cause hallucination for days. Cannabis Cannabis may have been an important part of ancient China's funeral rites and people may have used flames, rhythmic music, and hallucinogen smoke to get into an altered state of mind. Perhaps to travel with the dead or to the other world, just to be more liberal in expressing their mourning. In truth, these early civilized folks smoked anything they could lay their hands on. The first thing they smoked was most likely good at all them. Thanks to nomads such as Yammea, Everybody from Mesopotamia and Egypt to Greece and Rome got their hands on cannabis. Central Eurasia's Yamea people were a group of livestock herders who occupied the Eurasian steppe north of the Black Sea and the Caucasus Mountains and are now considered one of the three key tribes that founded European civilization. Around five millennia ago, they moved eastwards and brought cannabis along with them. They spread the growth and use of cannabis all throughout Eurasia. However, just like any drug baron, Yamea's history is full of violence as well. These nomads are the reason why Stonehenge today is a mystery. When Yamnia arrived in Britain 5,000 years ago, they wiped out the entire peaceful population of farmers who were the original Britons and builders of Stonehenge because they did not accept the Yamnia's gift of canvas. The same fate befell upon many other original Europeans who vanished after Yamnia's arrival. Yamnians travel on horseback from place to place in Europe and South Asia bringing with their marijuana. Egyptians, on the other hand, offer much concrete evidence of how fond they were of cannabis. Their detailed description of medical treatments in Ramesian Papyrus and Ebers Papyrus depicted how popular cannabis was as a medical remedy. For glaucoma, cannabis was grounded with celery and left overnight. This preparation would then be used the following morning to wash the eyes of patients suffering from glaucoma, and it did work to a degree. Evers Papyri recommended cannabis, grounded with honey to be used as feminine remedies. Interestingly, cannabis is now being explored for its potential to treat menstrual pain and discomfort as well as endometriosis. Cannabis has shown its presence in a lot of old Egyptian tombs and graves, including in that of Pharaoh Ramesses Amunku, which proves that cannabis had an important role in Egyptian religion as well as it was believed that the presence of cannabis in the tomb of the pharaoh could help guide them through the Nile into the heavens. It was believed that this drug was also part of the profession of witchcraft. People also consumed weed during certain rituals and festivities. Mushroom of Immortality Over 2,000 years ago, China had its own version of Xanax. Popular as more of a medicinal herb than recreational herb, Lingjai or Rizi mushroom was considered to carry the essence of immortality potency, divinity, and longevity. Ancient Chinese believed Lingjai to also have magical powers of the immortal beings called Zion that could take your spirit to the realm of heaven. In simple words, the mushroom would make you trip so bad that you will begin seeing all of your ancestors. Similarly, Shanglu or pokeweed was the preferred herb of the ancient Chinese sorcerers to commune with the spirits, and it was believed that when a sorcerer communes with a spirit, he and the spirit both partake, in taking the mushroom of immortality, and if the spirit or ancestor deems the mushroom as not of good quality, the sorcerer is seen as disrespectful and is required to commit suicide. Crazy. Five Stone Powders The idea of chemical narcotics is considered a fairly modern concept, but that isn't the case. Ancient Chinese were actually quite fond of synthetic narcotics. During the 3rd to 5th century AD, Chinese elites were getting high on a substance called Wuxi San. 
Wishy sand or five stone powder wasn't produced from any herb but was a straight up mineral mixture. The main ingredients were stalactites, fluoride, quartz, sulfur, and howlicite clay or kaolin, which had been pulverized and mixed in specific proportions. An immediate effect of taking wushi sand was a sudden rise in body temperature and hyperactivity. The effects were mitigated by eating cold foods, taking cold baths, or engaging in strenuous physical activities, such as walking long distances, to cool down the body through perspiration. There were records of users walking naked in winter or eating snow because they were unbearably hot. Those who consumed five stone powders would also experience an opening of the spirit and mind, which could be interpreted to mean hallucinations. The composition was also reported to have an aphrodisiac effect on men. It was quite trendy back then to consume five stone powder as a friendly group activity where abusers would find themselves getting amused at the shocking and outrageous conduct of each other before they would fall into a stupor. Naturally, such artificial substances had lasting and damaging effects on the body of those who regularly abused five stone powder. Long-term users would exhibit incoherent speech and thought processes. They were also found perpetually distracted. Physically, they would suffer swellings and painful limbs, and in some cases, resulted in death. Opium For 8,000 years, opium was an ever-approved next-door medicine for all maladies. Whether it be the Sumerian civilization, Egyptians, Chinese, Indians, Greeks, Romans, Arabs, medieval times, or the Renaissance era, opium was used for medicinal purposes, rituals, and of course recreation all over the world. However, the Mesopotamians were taking advantage of opium long before other civilizations. Some researchers do not doubt that the Assyrians were aware of the plant's properties and knew exactly what its secrets were. Even the Assyrian name of the poppy was Holgil, meaning happy plant. Long before the Assyrians, Sumerians engraved tablets from 4000 BC to 3000 BC describing the collection of poppy juice in the morning and its use in the production of opium. Jugs containing opium residue have also been found in Egyptian tombs, which is unsurprising given that the poppy was extensively cultivated in Egypt. In the classical era, the extract of the plant was known as opium thebiacum after the city of Waisit, which the Greeks knew as Thebes. The use of opium was generally restricted to priests, magicians, and warriors. Its invention is credited to Thoth, and it was said to have been given by Isis to Ra as a treatment for a headache. But that doesn't mean opium was away from domestic use, in fact, it was the recommended way to deal with noisy, sleepless babies. Can't make your baby fall asleep. Just give them a draft of opium. Shockingly, this practice remained in use till the Victorian era in Europe. Blue Lotus before civilizations were introduced to hemp or poppy, they had blue lotus. This stunningly beautiful flower growing along the banks of the Nile was perhaps the introduction to narcotics for many ancients. Also known as the sacred blue lily of the Nile, blue lotus has been revered by many ancient cultures and civilizations, from ancient Egypt to the ancient Greeks, Tibetans, and more. The ancient Egyptians had many traditional uses and applications of blue lotus. The flowers of blue lotus were steeped in wine, which was then shared during religious ceremonies, rituals, and celebrations. Blue Lotus was said to have the powers to connect one to the divine. It would induce higher states of being and consciousness. To give you a better understanding, Blue Lotus taken in excessive quantities would create a super-duper high. It would also induce a state of euphoria and make them feel relaxed with improved blood circulation, making it a potent aphrodisiac. The Blue Lotus helped them to create rituals and celebrations around sexuality. These rituals and celebrations involve the locals taking large amounts of blue lily with wine and then proceeding to have a massive orgy. Wow, just wow. With all that has been said, what do you think about the use of drugs in ancient times? Which of these drugs was the strangest to you? Which other historical eras would you like us to talk about? Tell me your answers down in the comment section. Hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. Also hit the bell as well so you don't miss any video cause we have a lot more interesting things to come. See you soon.